Hey guys and welcome back. In the last video, we have set up our models and applied migrations to the database, including this 0001 initial file. In this video, we are going to add some records to our database. So let's close the browser for now. And actually Django allows us to access something called the shell, which is very similar to the Python interpreter. Actually, you can go ahead and open it. So if you're running on Microsoft Windows like me, if you will type Python only, you will get this interpreter of Python, right? Where you can type code 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 3 divided by 2, for instance, and so on. You can print things. You can create functions. You can call functions. So this is the normal Python interpreter. But actually, there is another way to run Python code. You can go ahead and try that. Again, if you're running on Microsoft Windows, you can do I Python. If you're running on Linux or Mac, you will just add three. So let's go ahead and run I Python. OK, that's very interesting. Um, at first glance, you will find that it's very similar to the Python interpreter except that it tells you here that this is an enhanced interactive Python. So you might be asking yourself, why enhanced? Well, as a matter of fact, there are a lot of things that are different from the normal Python interpreter. For example, you have this green, beautiful in with one inside brackets. And this simply means that it needs an input from you. So if you will do one plus one, this is an input. If you will hit enter, you will get an output also with one index. But take a look at that. If I will do def, for example, and I will open parentheses, and if I will hit tab, now I have different things that, you know, are allowed for me to do. So it's actually making things simpler and easier for me, providing different classes, different methods, and so on and so on. So it's actually helping me. That's why it's enhanced. It's a better version than the normal Python interpreter. Also, you can do other commands. So for instance, you can do ls or you can do dir. Dir doesn't work. OK, so it works only on ls, which is a Unix system command and actually tells you here that dir is a function. All right, that's interesting. So you can do different things. You can actually run Java code. You can run JavaScript code. You can run SQL code and so on and so on. There is also something called the magic functions and magic functions simply are special commands that provide enhanced features not available in standard Python. And let me show you one magic function. So it will start by this ampersand and then following by time and we want the sum, then we want the range of whatever, a big number. If you will hit enter, it will tell you that the CPU times total of zero nanosecond, wall time two milliseconds, and the output is 49, whatever. The ampersand time actually provides a quick way to measure the execution time of a single command. That's what it does. So we have actually applied the ampersand time on the sum function. Now, the reason why I showed you IPython, that's very important for you as a Python programmer to understand that there is something called IPython. And you can read more about IPython in their website, ipython.org. Also, Django allows us to access something called the shell, which is the IPython in essence. But in this case, it's going to be very specifically tied to our Django application. And again, it will allow us to directly modify the database without much hassle. So to exit IPython, you will hit Control D. It's going to ask you, do you really want to exit? You will tell it just yes. And that's it. We're again inside our world tour project. So let's go ahead and run our shell. You can do it from the integrated terminal in your VS code. And if you're coding on any other code editor like Vim, Atom, Sublime Text, no problem. You can open your terminal and run from within the terminal. So as you can see, I've opened my PowerShell command prompt and I've activated the virtual environment. Now let me show you how to open the shell. You can go ahead and type python manage.py shell. That's going to open to you the same interface like we have seen in the IPython. So I'm going to do control L to clear the terminal. Now the first thing that we need to do is to import the tour class from models.py. 
Now, what I want to do actually is I want to instantiate the tour class by creating tour object. So I'm going to create basically some records, some rows in our database table. So each tour is going to represent a record in our database table. Each tour will have an origin country, will have a destination country, it will have a number of nights, and it will have a price. So let's say that I want to create the first record, which is going to be tour one. Tour one is going to have an origin country, let's say Japan. The destination country is going to be China, and the price, let's say $1,500. So that's the main idea. Now to do that, I will need to import from the models.py the tour class. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say from Asia tours agency application dot models dot pi file I want to import the tour class and you can see that we didn't get any errors and we have the second line ready to be instructed on what to do now what I want to do is I want to instantiate from that tour class a tour object so I'm going to call my tour object t01 that's going to be tour1 and that's going to be equal to the tour class this is object oriented programming by the way guys so we have our tour class this is a blueprint through which we can create different instances or different objects. And essentially, each object is going to play the role of the record inside our database table. All right. So the first attribute is the origin country. And we need to do it in the same order. Origin, destination, number, and price. So the origin country here, let's say, for instance, Japan. The destination country, I'm going to make it China. Let's say the number of nights. Uh, we're going to make it 10 nights. And for the price, I'm going to make it $1,500. Hit enter. And this way, we have successfully created our first tour in the table. Right. So what you can do is you can access different attributes of that tour one. So you can say to1.origin country. You should get Japan. If you will do to1.destination country, you should get China. If you will do to1.price, 1500, and to1.number of nights, you should get 10 nights. Now, take a look if you will do to1 only, you will get an output of tour object. This actually doesn't tell us much. We know already that to1 is an object of that tour class or an instance of that tour class. So what I was hoping for is to get a better string representation of that tour one. In order to do that, we need to use a method called stir method. We're going to enter the stir method inside the tour class. So make sure that you're properly indented and you're inside your tour class. So let's go ahead and do that together. So let me just add a comment here. This is a string representation of um, the tours in general, because that's going to be applied on all of the tours or all of the records that we're going to add to our table or to our class rather. So we will start by defining that function and that's called underscore underscore stir underscore underscore. And this is a special function brought to you by Python. The main purpose of this stir function is to bring you a nice string representation of whatever you want to display. So um, also there is, by the way, underscore, underscore, wrapper, underscore, underscore. So you can use both if you want. But I prefer the stir method. So the stir method takes self, of course. Then I want to return a formatted string. And let's say that I want to display the ID first. So I'm going to say, um, let's say, for instance, um, ID, whatever the ID is. So that's going to be the tour with the ID. That's the ID number. And notice that I haven't um, specified the ID in the tour class. And that's simply because Django is going to take care of that for us. You don't have to worry about adding ID manually and even incrementing it. So Django is going to add and increment for you each time you add a record to your table. So that's the ID number. And I want also the origin country. The origin country, let's say from, um, so let's say for instance, let's do it this way from and we'll put here two and we want the self dot um, destination country and we'll say for instance self dot number of nights that's going to be how many nights uh, costs or let's do it this way costs and whatever the price is self dot price and let's put um, the dollar sign here just like that to format it this way 
you can format it the way you want actually um, but that for me makes sense so you have the id first you have from the origin country to the destination country you have the number of nights and whatever the number of nights are costs and whatever the price is going to be for that tour good let's save and let's get back to our shell now the changes are not going to be applied immediately i need to get outside of the shell and get inside the shell one more time now again i want to import from the asia tours agency.models i want to import the tour and again i want to create the t01 and that's going to be equal to the tour class origin country japan destination country china number of nights 10 and price 1500 hit enter now you can do save by the way you can save that tour in the database this is very analogous to the commit statement that you enter in MySQL, for example. So you commit the changes, you tell the database that I'm happy with the changes and I want to save them. And that's exactly the same thing you do here, to1.save. Now again, we can do to1.destination country. We get China, we can do to1.origin uh, country, right? You got the same thing for the price and number of nights. Now the new thing here, if you will do to1, you will get a proper representation of your tour. Tour, you have ID number one from Japan to China, 10 nights costs $1,500. And this is thanks to this stir method that we've created inside our tour class. Let me go ahead and create another tour, TO2. Let's make um, the origin country to be Vietnam. Let's do the destination country let's say South Korea. Let's also make number of nights. Let's make them 15 nights. And let's make the price $2,500. Let's close that. Now we have TO2. If you'll do TO2, you will get a nice representation of that tour. So you have TO1 and you have TO2. Perfect, now we have two tours. I made that deliberately to show you that the tour here has an ID of none, while the first tour has an ID of one. Why is that? The reason why the output was this way is that we didn't save the tour two. So if you will do to2.save, now if you will display the to2 again, now you can see that Django has added the second ID to that record. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to render all of these records on the web page. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.